Good morning everybody. Today we're scouting in the big woods for buck bedding with corn dog and Ted and Greg. Basically what we have is these wide open hard woods and these rolling hills with a few steep ditches. And this is how most of it looks. This real open hardwood timber. But there is bucks that bed in here and live in here. And today we're gonna go in and try to figure out where they're living. Gonna dive into this bowl here. Getting down in here and we're starting to run into a decent amount of sign. These woods are wide open, but here at the bottom of these ridges where it dumps into this huge ditch, we're starting to run into some pretty good crossings, some big rubs. Greg found a scrape a few minutes ago. I'm assuming most of this sign is left on years with a good mass crop in here because there's a ton of oaks. Found that crossing back there about, what, 75 yards or so probably? Yep. Right behind us and we're following these trails back in here to the points of these ridges. These deer will want to bed off of the points of all these ridges, especially in this open terrain, overlooking this big ditch down below us. And even though the timber's wide open, the bucks have definitely been in here. Go ahead. This is definitely a bed right here. I just found a piece of hair in it. And we were just coming up that trail. It's right behind Greg and the camera right now with all the rubs on it. That big crossing's 100 yards away or so over there. And like I said, this main ditch runs right down here below us. And off of that ditch are all these little secondary points that come out. But we're finding bedding on the ends of these points. And you can see there's a rub right here, right in the edge of the bedding. There's a big bed right here. There's one right here in front of the camera. I'm actually sitting in the deer's bed right now and there's multiple beds here. There's one here, there's one here, there's kind of one around the tree. And as you can tell behind me, this knob goes up pretty steep right here. He's got wind coming right off the top of that thing as he's laying here. This is very predictable with the wind. He's gonna lay here in the bed like this and watch on both sides of this knob. This is right at the end of the ridge and he's right on that knob where he can see down in the ditch to the east he can see down in the ditch to the west and then clear off the end of the knob into the creek bottom with wind blowing in from behind him. So the thing's pretty much bulletproof in here. If you're going to try to hunt this bed or this bedding area on the end of this point, you could actually hunt that trail that we came in here on. Kind of goes over the hill right here back to my northwest. You could actually come down the way that we just came in, pop up in a tree about 60, 70 yards from this deer. And if he stands up and goes that direction, you're gonna be within that 100 yard bubble during daylight to potentially kill him. The problem is, is he's probably bedding in here on an acorn year. And in most cases, he's standing up and munching on acorns right here at the bed. So you've gotta get extremely close to him, which is super tough and open terrain like this. But that, that one trail right there might give you a little bit of an opportunity. That his view is somewhat obscured right there over top of that ridge. And you always got to be down at the deer's eye level when he's bedded because that's what he's going to be looking at when you're sneaking in here. You could come down through there and get really, really close to this thing without him knowing it. But that's probably the only spot where you could do it. Would you set up farther down off the ridge in the bottom or would you stay up higher on the ridge, side of the ridge? Probably the, the higher you can be the better because the more consistent wind flow you're going to get. See, this ridge comes off running you know, from the northwest. So if he's got a northwest wind that's blowing straight down this point, that's most ideal for him, but he'll still bed there on a northeast. So you hunt it with a northeast, a just off wind, and as soon as that sun crests over the horizon, your thermals are gonna pull down into that ditch over there, and they're gonna go right past this deer. That's the one thing that's more predictable. Many times you're gonna be getting a shot at him like almost about the time he's gonna smell you, you know. That's how close it is. You gotta get in real tight to kill them. And, and most of the time we mess this up, not gonna lie. Like we, we either bang a stick or we get set up too early and the wind gets to swirling. And, but if you do it enough and you, you put yourself in that position over and over again, eventually it's gonna work. Man, these woods are just wide open in here. We ain't found the best spot yet. 
We ain't found the best spot. There's gonna be lots of beds just like that one right here. Got another one right here. That's the nice thing with this hilly wooded terrain like this, and there's a rub right behind you, Brody, is that uh, they're very predictable. Go ahead, curl up in it, Brody. <laughs> I'm good. You gotta, you gotta get down in it. You gotta just you gotta lay down in it. <laughs> see what they can see. And this hilly stuff like that, you got all those, all that bedding is occurring around that thicker line. It's not necessarily the upper third or the bottom third of the ridge. It kind of changes as it moves down through there, but that's more or less what we're following when we're scouting. We're following that thick line all the way out into these bowls and onto these points and stuff. And the most, for the most part, the bedding in the last half hour or so has been occurring around the end of this point. And there's a lot of it right there. You know, and I'm sure we're going to find the same thing on the end of this point, probably some on the end of this point. And then once you get up towards the top of the ridge where they all finger into, there's going to be a bunch of sign right there on the top of the ridge. But that's also going to be where people are hunting. And if those deer are bedding clear down here on the end of those points, it's going to take them a long time to get up there. And you're never going to see those big ones in daylight, not unless you get down in here with them. Let's go down and across. Go over there. Oop, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> coming up the point of this ridge and most of the deer sign in the bed seem to be on the same elevation line and look up this trail we're on this trail right here and we're starting to get up to that elevation line you can start seeing rubs popping up they just don't have as good of an advantage up here as like they did back there on that little line good been staying on this elevation line and I wanted to find one of these bedding situations and really go into detail with you on how we go about setting up once we find it. In these big woods and in the hills like this, and when I'm saying hills, we're dealing with more gradual sloping hills here. These aren't real sharp, steep, you know, stuff like you'd have out east or something. Regardless, deer still seem to bed and use it all in a similar fashion. Right here, we don't have one of these points but it's almost a little flat spot on the side of this ridge where they can bed and they can see everything. That's constantly what you're looking for. We sort of had to reset our brains from what we've been looking at in the river bottoms lately because they bed much differently in this type of terrain. This is wide open where we're standing right here. But if you get down in this deer's bed and you look around and think about why he's here, He's got a lot going for him. In the fall, there's a little creek down there about 100 yards away. He can see clear to that creek. Over here, there's another ridge that runs down. He can see that. If you turn around over here, he can see 100 yards that direction. So he's got a lot going for him in this spot. And then he just sits here with a west wind blowing off of the main ridge. And we found piles of rubs all along this elevation line down through there. The trick is, the rubs in the, the path of travel is on this elevation line, but they're only bedding in these certain spots where they have this advantage, where they can see everything down below them. They're not just going to bed all along this elevation line. They're going to stick to these little points, these little bowls, these little flat spots out on the edge where they've got side advantage in addition to wind advantage. So from this bed, now we got to think about how we're going to hunt it. And there's a pretty big blowdown over there that Greg just found and there's a bunch of rubs right on the back side of it but that's one place where this deer is vulnerable we can come in from that way and then come around that blowdown and set up just out of sight from this deer and be on this same path of travel so if he stands up and heads north we could potentially kill him we're gonna leave Brody in the bed right here and go over here on the other side of this blown down tree you can kind of see it over there and try to look for a potential spot to set up
Okay, you can see this big dead tree here that's blown down. And Greg and Brody are back there about 60 yards or so. Go ahead and crouch in the bed, Brody. Now Brody is down in the bed at, you know, the height that the deer is going to be at. And Greg's probably filming me right now through that stuff. And we're still in trouble right here. But because of this big blowdown, we can use this to our advantage to sneak in and hide. There's also several trails that are leading out of that bed in that bedding area that lead out onto the point of this ridge. You can see another one of them leading down the ridge right here. So we could come in, and the, the idea here is that you want to be able to shoot into their comfort zone. That deer ain't going to get but 50, 60 yards from that bed during daylight very often, especially if it's a very old, mature buck. They're just not going to do it. But right here, we're out of sight from them. And it was it's only a matter of, what, three, four yards? Yeah. I mean, from where we were just standing. Right up there. Yep. So you're looking at trees like this one here. That white oak back there, there's a red oak back there, right there. And if you climb up in those trees, you come in here and you get on the back of this tree, one of these two, maybe this one right here, this red oak. You come in here, you get on the back side of this tree, you zip up the thing. There's our blowdown right over there about 15, 20 yards away. And that bed is another 50 yards past that. So you're going to go up this thing about 10 to 15 feet. You want to be careful on how high you go too because if you go too high then the deer is going to be able to see you in his bed over there but if you wait for kind of a windy day or a wet day you can sneak in down through these trails come right up to this tree climb up in there and he's none the wiser and you're set up 65 70 yards from him in a pretty good spot but i want to emphasize that the difference here is a matter of a few yards that's it there's the trail right here, leading right out of the bedding. Stand up, bro. There he is. I just seen him stand up over there about 60 yards away. So if the buck stands up over there where Brody's at, uses this trail, comes down through here, you can see our white oak back there that Ted and I were just at. What is that, 20 yard shot? Yeah, probably. There's another good red oak right up the hill a little bit further. And that one might even be better because that one's got a very clear shot to this point. But that's how we set them up in the hills like this in open terrain. That deer is almost completely bulletproof in his bed right where he's laying at. But you can still get real close to him. The trick is finding the beds. You got to find exactly where they're at. And you're not necessarily just hunting one buck bed in this case. I was just over there across that ditch and there were several more on those other fingers and stuff that way. And there's more down this finger that we located but that's the trick you got to find what you think is the best stuff and then set up within 100 yards of it and sometimes you'll get deer coming from the other direction because you're you're not only set up to hunt that bed but you're also set up to hunt this elevation line in this path of travel where we found all these rubs down through here and as far as wind is concerned you've got a west wind blowing off the top of this ridge that's why he's bedded where he is over there He's better there on a westerly type wind. You can still hunt those trees on a west wind. You're just killing him right before he gets your wind. See what I mean? Yeah. Like he's coming out of those beds, he's getting this far. If he makes it another 10 yards over there, he's gonna be smelling you. That's how close you're playing that wind. But that's a good setup. That's a good spot right there for a stand, I think. Have to mark it on on X and go find some more. Yeah. Ted's got his handy compass. There it turned right. I think that's right. <laughs> Make it. Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. We just made it back up here to the Hummer. It's time to get to town, get something to eat, get some water, and stay tuned. We got some more good stuff coming to you here at the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that. Like this video and uh, we'll see you real soon on the next one.